just a quick video showing that things don't always go to plan. It doesn't matter if it's your trainer or your friend or you. Um, horses have their own agendas a lot of the time too, which isn't a terrible thing. Um, I'm just trying to create a little draw here because Stark was so focused on my neighbor's horse. Stark was finally done doing his best impersonation of the Roadrunner from Looney Tunes. I just put a line on him and did some groundwork. The focus of my groundwork with him was changes of direction, uh, transitions, things like that, just to get his attention towards me rather than my neighbor's horse. We started getting some really nice transitions that were pretty seamless and, and pretty well connected with very minimal sass. He gets a little sassy sometimes, but in this particular instance, it has a lot more to do with Arwen trying to micromanage him and help. I like to have him stop and stand still and just relax, get his adrenaline up with the departures, and then just have him sit and chill out. It's really, really good for their emotional fitness, which apparently he needed work on today because he was acting like a Looney Tune earlier, and that's fine. Then here I started working on a little bit of him sticking to me, keeping the distance between us the same, as well as not letting me get out in front of him or get behind him with him rushing off and leaving me. Also work a lot on body control even though we move out of the frame here I'm working on a little bit of sideways um, which would be lateral maneuvers in that instance a leg yield I like to be able to do shoulders in haunches in things of that sort it really helps get the horse better balanced over their whole body and once you can influence those different parts then you can influence the horse's ability to stretch down and out And here I upped the ante a little bit. Um, I started running my feet with him and continuing his uh, high speed. And that caused him to start thinking about leaving me and get a little bit sassy on the line there. I don't want him to put tension on the line. Again, I just want him to maintain the distance between us and still be connected. This right here is a great example of that connection. I slow my feet down and stop, and he slams his brakes. Once I felt he was ready to be ridden, I hopped on. And when I first get on any horse, I work on them paying attention to me, as well as their relaxation. I do a lot of walking when I first get on so that they can stretch more. And I like to do in the transitions, not just like walk and trot and stop and canter. I like to do really slow walk, a little bigger walk, stop, big walk, little walk. I mean, I do as much variations in that as I can. At this point in our ride, I just wanted to test how well he was connected to me. So I stopped the energy in my seat, kind of shifted it back a little bit and just wanted to see how well connected he was to that and if he would keep walking forward or stick with me and he stuck with me 
really well and very softly. And here I'm just testing out some more of the same thing, how well he sticks with me and stays connected by stopping and going hopefully off my seat. Uh, but I want him to also be able to do the same thing if I use my reins or my sticks or my legs. Then there at the end, I went for haunches in. And as we come into the video, I just want to point out how well he's stretching down, which really stretches out the top line. Uh, that allows him and sometimes even causes a bit of engagement in the abdominal muscles, which is a precursor to any kind of collected work. You cannot get your horse to truly collect and come underneath themselves unless you can first get them to stretch that top line. And here Stark has like the bounciest trot in the whole world. Um, I asked for a downward transition and he really didn't commit to it there so I stopped him, backed him up, asked him to go forward again and as we come around I just start testing the same thing. A lot of horses that really like to go don't want to slow down once they're in the trot, so the more transitions you throw in there with longer periods of walking, the more they chill out and stop trying to, you know, race off into the sunset because they're just going to have to walk in just a minute so they don't want to, you know, have a huge trot and then as it goes what happens is they slow their trot down long term. You just kind of build it up from there. At this point in our ride, I felt like Stark was well connected and really responding well to directions that I was asking him to go, as well as speed, just based off of my seat mostly. So I went ahead and hopped off and quit in that place so that he would seek that connection out the next time that he has a session with me. And yeah, so that's just a quick video on how things don't always go according to plan and sometimes you just kind of go where it takes you.